All right. There are several breaking news stories coming out that I want to go over in detail with you. And to help me do that, I have my friend Vince Everett Ellison. Vince, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, uh, Steve, it's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. I appreciate you coming on. I know you don't get the same kind of views with me that you do Tucker Carlson, but we always have a great time and, and we get deep into the woods of what's really going on. Let me give some background really quick, just so people know who you are. Uh, Vince is an author, an independent reporter, documentary filmmaker, and more. Uh, his books include Crime, Inc., 25 Lies, and The Iron Triangle. He also produced a film called Will You Go to Hell for Me? Um, and so the, the first thing I want to jump in uh, with you on is this Fannie Willis, Donald Trump, Georgia story. Okay, There's some breaking news out this morning that Judge Scott McAfee of Georgia has thrown out six of the indictment charges against Trump, saying... Uh, there's no way uh, from the evidence that he was trying to overthrow the election in Georgia. Uh, he did nothing wrong with the phone call between he, his lawyers, and the Secretary of State, Brad Raffsenberger. He also, uh, meaning Donald Trump, uh, did not in any way try to drum up fake votes in order to take the state from Joe Biden. However, now, District Attorney Fonnie Willis uh, is the one facing potential fraud and misconduct disqualification. She broke up a family. She had secret meetings with the mayor of Atlanta, the J6 committee, Vice President Kamala Harris. Her boyfriend, Nate Wade, had two secret meetings with the White House, uh, was paid double the price of everyone else on the team, even though he didn't have the same legal experience. It's now been shown that he's been paid close to a million dollars, some of that cash under the table. And with that extra money, he took District Attorney Fonnie Willis on multiple sexcations. What do you think of this story? This is huge. What, what are your thoughts, Vince? Well, it exposed the, D, the Democratic Party and why they want DEI and affirmative action. I've always told people, DEI and affirmative action is not about trying to end discrimination. It's about trying to dis control discrimination. They want to choose the Black people who they elevate so they can use them to do what they want them to do. And Fonnie Willis and Wade are just the best description of this that I've seen in a very, very long time. Her, Letitia James, uh, this, who's a big fat prosecutor up in uh, Manhattan. Al is also Alvin Braggs. Home. Yeah, Bragg. All of them are just a bunch of House Negroes that the Democratic Party chose that we want you to put, we're going to put you in these positions of authority. And what do you do for us? This is how you pay us back. You are going to do what we tell you to do. Don't try to help the Black community. Don't try to elevate Black people. You are there to serve the master. And so Donald Trump comes out. He's a danger to the Democratic Party power structure. They snap their fingers, bam, and put these people out there. And look what and look at what happens. Finally, don't know what she's doing. Wade doesn't know what he's doing. They're out there spending money. They're out there meeting with um, uh, the people in the White House. Don't know how to hide it. Don't know how to cover it up because they're all stupid. They're affirmative action, DEI babies. And I've told people this. Think about this. They said, we need DEI and affirmative action. Why? Because the government and private businesses are racist. Okay? If we buy your argument, and the government and private businesses are racist, yeah, you then say that you want to use affirmative action and DEI so that you can allow these racist entities to determine the Black people that they want to elevate. Now think about that. That's like a Jew saying, I'm going to go to Adolf Hitler to the Nazis and let them determine the Jews that they're going to elevate. That's like a chicken going to Colonel Sanders and say, we want you to choose the chickens you want to elevate. They're going to choose the ones that they want, the one that's going to serve their purposes. It was great watching Schindler's List, and you saw that even in the concentration camps, that they had Jews that were working for the Nazis. You remember Oscar Schindler had to always bribe this Jew that was calling the names to get the people that he wanted out? He'd give him a watch, he'd give him a gold pen, or he'd give him money. They had to bribe Jews that were working for the Nazis. It's the same thing with the Black community now in the Democrat Party. When you see black people working for the Democratic Party, you need to put these two things together. They're incompetent 
and they're working for their white master. And they're not going to do black people any good. That's Fonnie Willis, Wade, Bragg, Letitia Jane, and the whole coot caboodle of them. Okay, wow, interesting. So you, you think that these people were purposely selected so that because they could control them and get, well, I mean, obviously we know that they were having secret meetings. Uh, yeah. You can't tell me it was a coincidence that uh, Fonnie Willis is meeting with the J6 committee, Vice President Kamala Harris, the mayor of Atlanta at the same time, her boyfriend's having secret meetings with the White House. And then all of a sudden, these guys have the idea, oh, let's go ahead and charge Donald Trump in yeah. a RICO, yeah. in a RICO case. Yeah. They they were given permission. They were told we'll back you with money. Mm -hmm. Then we found out there was a spy, uh, this this guy who worked for uh Biden and getting Democrats elected. He was put into Fonnie Willis's camp specifically to bring information mm -hmm. back to the White House. This whole thing is is a scam in order to get Donald Trump. He's he's he really is that dangerous. And yet at the same time, yesterday, uh, Representative Cory Bush. Uh, during those public hearings with Robert Hur on the mental capacity of Joe Biden, his stealing of documents as vice president as and as a senator, she calls Donald Trump the white supremacist in chief on national TV. I mean, you've been studying this for a long time. You know the evilness of white supremacy. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you seen any indications that Donald Trump is in any way linked to the KKK, the Grand Masters, the Wizards, uh, or these white supremacy groups? No, man, the KKK is a construct of the Democratic Party. Always has been, always will be. The KKK started right after the Civil War in Pulaski, Tennessee. Uh, uh, the, uh, the first Grand Wizard, I believe, was Nathan Bedford Forrest. He was even a Confederate general. And their job was to take the old black slaves who had just become free and keep them under control. Same thing now, they do it now. And they they went about and they took their old House Negroes, put them in charge of the black community, and the House Negroes always reported back to the white higher-ups in the Democrat Party. After the black people got a right to vote, they took those same black House Negroes and put them in charge. They called them mayor and aldermen and city councilmen and congressmen now. But their job is also the same thing. And if you want proof, look at the black community. We're at the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in the United States of America. We're at the bottom of everything good, at the top of everything bad. And they're proud of it. It's not like they're trying to change it. If you go in and start talking about school choice, no, they want to change it. They don't want to change it. You know why? Because the public educational system is teaching black people to be ignorant, afraid, and under the control of the Democrat Party. They don't care that 85% of black children can't read or are proficient in, in math. care that they're poor or that they're violent. They vote for the Democrat Party. And as long as they vote for the Democratic Party, the Democrats aren't going to change a thing because it works for them. Detroit, Memphis, Chicago, LA, Portland, San Francisco, you name it, they control it and they're going to keep it right there. And they're going to choose their Black people to put in control. So when you go to Detroit, Man, you got black people running Detroit, and they running it into the ground. Chicago, same thing. And what are you finding? They are undermining their own people to bring in the illegals. Right now, up in Maryland, just read the story that, that, that well, didn't shock me. It just illuminated me. The black uh, governor, his name is um, 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 West something or another, uh, West Moore, they have decided to take uh, Obamacare and expand it to illegal aliens now. Yeah, don't give them free health care. They can, they can buy into the Affordable Care Act. Now, everybody knows that's a magnet, and this is going to draw more and more people up to Maryland, but that's what they want. They understand that the more illegals they bring in, these people are counted on the census. Donald Trump tried to stop that. He wanted only citizens counted on the census. But no, 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 no. They thought that they want everybody counted. Which means what? That as people move out of out of California and go to Texas, Tennessee, or Florida, the illegals come in and replace them, and they're counted on the census, and they can add that to get their congressional districts back. They can do it in Illinois. They can do it in New York. This is how they're going to keep their, their congressional districts and their power, by adding illegals to their populations. They know what they're doing. Why do you think that Joe Biden will let Ukraine go down? 
before he stops illegal the, 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 the illegal immigration. He knows what he's doing. The Republicans say, we'll give you all the money you want for Ukraine if you stop the illegal immigration. No, we will not do it. This is how they're going to get their congressional districts back. This is how they're going to get their power back in Congress. And this is how they plan to take America and deep six it and destroy it and make it a Marxist and a communist nation. That's the Democrat Party. Wow. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, well said. Well said. I, I, I have a friend uh, of mine the other day. He was telling me uh, that Democrats say that white Republicans are always screaming that Democrats are trying to replace white people with black and brown people. Mm -hmm. uh, but th this friend of mine, a, a black gentleman from Texas, said they're really trying to replace the black vote with the migrant yeah. vote. Exactly. Um, I, I mean, what, what are your what are your thoughts on that? I, I, I mean, I, I just kind of live in my own world. I don't I don't really think about this stuff until somebody points it out to me. Once he pointed it out to me, I was like, OK, there, there might actually be some merit uh, to, to this thinking. What are your thoughts on that? The black population was growing exponentially in the 40s and the 60s and the 70s. Then all of a sudden, Roe v. Wade and the Negro Project came up. Martin Luther King Jr. was the first recipient of the Margaret Sanger Award in 1966 for helping to set up abortion clinics in the black community. The whole civil rights movement, the black preachers and the black politicians, the black um, folks that work inside the civil rights organizations helped Planned Parenthood set up these abortion clinics in the black community for money. They got paid by white liberals to do it. My book, The Iron Triangle, talks about it. So what happened? Because of the bloodlust of the Democrat Party and the fact that they're a bunch of perverts, psychopaths, liars, and anti-Christian bigots, they destroyed them. They like death, they like destruction, they like destroying people. So consequently, they were born to 20 million black children. They put a whole lot of black men in jail, and a lot of them, when they get out, they can't vote anymore. And then there's murder. Please get over. So what's happening? They're killing their voting population. The people that are voting for them, they're also killing and they're murdering. So what do they have to do? They got to replace them. And they are, they're, they're not going to replace them with people that they believe are going to vote for the Republican Party. They're going to bring in people that have a socialist concept. And those are usually people from South America. And so they're going to replace, the, and, and, and they have replaced the Black community because they've killed most of them. They've uh, uh, put them in prison. Uh, they've aborted them. And they got to abort them because, of course, they use abortion. They use aborted fetuses uh, inside the pharmaceutical industry. They use them for makeup, and they use them for COVID vaccinations, and they use them for all kind of stuff. All, all, your, all, all of your viewers need to just Google what do they use aborted fetuses for in the pharmaceutical industry. And you'll find that a lot of people use them for makeup and to make their skin look better and to, to do all kind of um, uh, um, uh, vaccines and all kinds of You can go into a state, and if the state will not allow you to have an abortion, they'll fly you to a state to allow you to have an abortion because they need that fetus. They need to make money off of it. So they were aborted or murdered most of the black community. Now they got to bring in people to replace them. And that's where the Hispanics and that's where the illegals come in, and that's their plan. Wow. Okay. Because aren't aren't there um aren't aren't there about 30 Thirty to thirty-five million Black Americans, or is it higher than that? I, no, it's been a, it's, yeah, it's about that. It's been that way about maybe twenty years. Okay, it hasn't so, it hasn't expanded much since then. For about but, twenty years, been about steady. But but without all of these abortion clinics, you're saying the population would be closer to like fifty million? Oh yeah, oh, of course yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll double by now. We've had we've had twenty million abortions since 1972, and when and you talk about aborting a child, you're talking about aborting all the children that they're going to ever have. So in so 1972 was 50 years ago. The children that were aborted then would be having grandchildren now. So yeah, yeah they they were aborted um, probably about half of the black population. It should be around maybe oh about 50, 60 million now. But Margaret Sanger said that we were human weeds and that we need to be exterminated. And of course, most white liberals believed that and agreed with it at the time. But then they needed our votes. But now abortion has been baked into the black community, uh, baked into the black community. But they also need the money. They also need uh, to kill people like all psychotics do. And they can't stop. So they have to kill the people, put them in jail, uh, you know, drug them up, 
beat them down, but then they got to replace them with people that will vote also. So yeah, they're you know the the, the Democrats are evil, but they yeah, but they're not crazy. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Um, the other the other big thing next to illegal immigration that many Americans are waking up to is the fact that uh, it, there there always seems to be money when it comes to war, but there's there's not money for helping uh, struggling communities. There's not money for our seniors. Uh, there's not money for our veterans. There's not money for our school systems. Uh, like they just want to keep giving more. They they want to keep taking more of our money and then giving away giving it away to other countries. What I mean is this just part of like the government slapping us in the face, trying to control us through poverty, uh, lack of education. Uh, or, or do they have genuine concern for the Ukrainian people? Because uh, when this war first started, a lot of people were on board, Republican and Democrat. Now, a lot of Republican leaders are going, wait a minute, uh, this feels like a money laundering operation. Nobody, the, Nobody's accounting for the money. Only 30% of the money and the weapons are making it to the front line. We need more, 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 more of that American taxpayer money in order to beat Putin, but there's there's no there's no money for you and me. There's no money for impoverished nations like like communities. Like what is going on? Why are Democrats so hell bent on stealing our money to give it away to a country in Europe that people can't even find on a map? This is something that a lot of people do not know. And thank you for that question, Stephen. Uh, the Biden administration started connecting all foreign money to the expansion of LGBTQ and abortion. So they connected all of our foreign money to these two things. And if nations don't expand these two things in their countries, they will not get the foreign money. So they wanna use foreign money to press a liberal agenda all over the world. And they wanna use the, 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 the government of the United States of America to press this agenda. Now, Donald Trump wasn't doing this, but Joe Biden did. So now when you look at what's going on in Ukraine, one of the biggest problems that, that Putin had with Ukraine is its acceptance of this Western ideology of LGBTQ plus and abortion, but mostly LGBTQ. And he told them that Russia was pushing back on this now because Russia was dying and that these lifestyles were going to destroy Russia. And so when Ukraine decided to become part of NATO, one of the things that they said you're going to have to do is you're going to have to expand these abortion rights and these LGBTQ rights. And a lot of people in the, in the Russian Orthodox Church said, no, we're not doing that. And this is where the conflict started. Now, this is something they don't talk about a, a whole lot here in America. You need to look at a lot of the things that started this conflict and look at a lot of the things that Vladimir Putin have talked about. He's talked about here in America that our policy is being controlled by a bunch of satanic pedophiles. And he said this in front of his nation. He talked about the fact that we're pressing these unchristian, uh, these uh, um, uh, um, immoral ideologies on our people and that America is dying and that the West is pressing this stuff eastward. And he said, and it goes no further. So right now, each, even in Africa, a lot of African nations started pushing back because the Obama administration said that we're going to, um, we, we're going to have to attach all the money that we're giving to Africa when it comes to AIDS and other things. We want, you don't get it unless you expand the rights of LGBTQ and abortion. And a lot of the African nations said, no, then you can keep your money. That's when China came in with the Belt and Road Initiative and Vladimir Putin came in and said, we'll give you the money without any strings attached. And this is where we're having this conflict. And this is why you're seeing China and Russia coming together. Joe Biden and the Democrats are able now to do something that America has been trying to stop for the last 40, uh, the last 80 years, ever since World War II. We've tried to keep China and Russia separate. We never wanted these two nations to come together. But because of this LGBTQ thing that they're pressing, and because of this global warming thing that they're pressing, and because of this abortion thing that they're pressing, Russia and China have come together and they become a common foe against the United States of America. And now they're bringing Africa into it. They're bringing most of Eastern Europe, Europe into it. They're bringing most of Asia into it. 
And now because of this radical LGBTQ abortion and climate change agenda, America is about to go to war with the whole world. And we need to stop paying attention to it. Yeah. Wow. 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 Okay. Uh, in our final few minutes together, Vince, um, tell my audience about Crime, Inc. What's in there? What are we going to learn by reading the book? Well, Cr Crime, Inc. is a book that I came out this past October. It's a book that I wrote that um, uh, describes the Democratic Party as a crime family. It, 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 it uses the same tactics as the mafia. It uses a public educational system to groom children, just like the mafia does. It They groom children to join the mafia. They groom children to join the Black Democratic Party. They use the public education system to um, uh, sexually groom children also. They uh, use the um, uh, uh, unions to loan their money. The teachers' unions, you know, they, they give the teachers pay raises. Teachers, of course, then take the, the pay raise and give some money to the union. And the, union, the unions give 90% of their money to the Democrat Party. They are in, in league, league with the cartels. One of the reasons why the Democratic Party will not seal that border is because all the cartel tails down south are billionaires. They have lawyers and lobbyists, K Street down in DC. They give them money. The Democratic Party gets that money and they won't seal the border. So it's this crime family thing. The reason why they want to they, they want to defund the police inside the inner city. Same reason. How are you going to sell the dope and do the sex trafficking if you got police everywhere? So they want to run the police out so they can do all of their crime in the inner cities. They are a crime family. They kill children on an industrial level. Uh, the mob used to do hits for a living. They called it Murder, Inc., Bugsy Siegel and Anastasia and all of them. Well, uh, the Democratic Party got over 1,000 Murder, Inc. all over the country. They're called Planned Parenthood and Abortion Clinic, and they get paid for every hit. And Planned Parenthood gives money back to the Democratic Party. So the Democratic Party, do, they do about a million hits a year in America to small children, and they get paid for every hit they do. So that's what Crime Inc. does. And I want your viewers also to go to my podcast, the Best Ever Dozen podcast. I talk about all of this stuff weekly. And I put it down. We talk about was slavery a choice. We talk about how they use the public educational system to destroy America. We, we talk about does the Democratic Party, can you be a well-versed Democrat and be a Christian? Yeah, we put it all down and we answer those questions. So I say again, Stephen, the Democratic Party is an evil institution. It's the part of perverts, liars, psychopaths, and anti-Christian bigots. They were the party of slavery from 1800 to 1860, the party of the Confederacy from 1860 to 1865. They're the party of Jim Crow from 1865 to 1965. And now they're the party of murder, transgenderism, atheism, and all they do is meditate on blood. And we need to work hard to make sure that they're kicked out of power in 2024. Yeah. Wow. Oof, man. You should be a preacher, my friend. <laughs> um, I'm going to put a link to the book. I also want to put a link to your new your new YouTube podcast. Um, you always, you know, it's it's beautiful. Everybody, go go check it out. You know, you said something. It, it never crossed my mind that defund the police could actually be these groups behind the scenes trying to remove police so that they can keep doing crime. I always thought it was about we hate the police. We feel targeted as a community. Uh, and I know some people think that's what it is, but it, it never crossed my mind that it may have something to do with actually keeping those channels open, those doors open in order to keep facilitating drug cells and, and things like that. So that's that's really that's really eye opening to me. I never, never thought about that. Uh, Vince, thank you so much for coming on, going through these big news stories, telling us about your book. I'll, I'll make sure to put those links down below. I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too, Stephen. Thank you. And thank you, a wonderful audience. I mean, you, you, I, I always watch your shows, man. They're always so informative. And, I, and your audience has to be some of the most intelligent people in the United States of America. Thank you. And thank everybody that's watching this show today. Really, I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.